Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we have Greg Howe and he's going to be playing through his track Kick It All Over from his original 1988 album. So let's get Greg up on screen and see how he gets on. I'm just going to jump in here, otherwise I'm not going to jump in at all because there's so much going on that always is with Greg and I've been waiting to get to Greg Howland because there's so much technique in there. It's like an all-you-can-eat buffet of technique mixed with genres in terms of jazz and hard rock techniques, metal techniques, alternate picking, legato, hammer-ons, pull-offs and the way that Greg applies his own technique to those techniques because he uses a lot of first finger slides but that common approach of having three note per string scales and Greg very much works his way through those scales by using four notes per string and sliding that first finger up if he's ascending and down if he's descending so it's a really cool approach to playing through these lines another thing you'll notice is Greg's vibrato the way that he throws it in there and controls it so well but we've got a different technique of vibrato here as well because everybody's used to that standard rock blues vibrato that we get from so many guitar players when you're just bending the pitch of that string up and letting it come down again just changing the pitch keeping it really nice and even just to get that nice frequency vibrato whereas here Greg is using this sliding vibrato where he quickly slides between two frets going up and down the guitar and that's something that you'll see George Lynch do as well another guitarist that I have featured on this channel so go and look for him if you want to see that technique in effect there as well but George 
George also slides, as well as Greg, down a fret and then up a fret. So they're encapsulating the note that they want to get that vibrato effect on by having it in the middle of those three frets. But obviously the slide has got to be really quick in order to get that vibrato effect. That's something that I do mention about top guitarists and top instrumentalists is when they are composing, they'll generally try and get the same setup as you would have with a song and somebody that's singing, only now the guitar's doing the singing and having that chorus part in the song where it's just a really nice melodic tapping section, really nice legato sound to it, following the chords, but it is a definite chorus and he keeps going back to that to revisit it, which gives you something familiar, so it makes the journey something that's going to be interesting. You can go down different avenues, but then always come home. And Greg was one of those guys that was part of that group of amazing players in the 80s where they really started to push techniques. And especially with Van Halen and Tapping and George Lynch, like I mentioned as well, you just had so many top-end guitarists who were pushing the boundaries of speed, but then also technique. Like I said, Greg does things that other players don't do in terms of his approach to runs his expression, the way that he sweeps as well, and a technique that he's known for, which is called, or at least it's been coined, as hammer-ons from nowhere, because Greg would tap onto a string without picking it in order to get these runs together that are so unique and so off the wall because you're not expecting someone to jump so high up the fretboard, especially without picking the string first. So it meant that Greg really did open up the freedom of the fretboard because he didn't now need to pick the string that he's jumping to. He just has a massive hammer on to that note wherever he wants to jump to. I also love about this video when Greg starts to lose a little bit of that sustain, which really just signify how clean his tone is, relatively speaking, because it's so tempting for a lot of players, especially if you're playing fast, to put on loads of overdrive, loads of reverb, loads of delay to repeat the signal of the note that you're playing. So then sometimes if you do mess up a note, if you've got the previous note right, the delay from that is going to cover over or at least ring alongside the note that you might mess up. So a lot of players really do rely heavily on that delay being almost at the same level as that in Input so that when you're inputting your playing and getting the delay at the same level, it hides a lot of inadequacies on technique. But of course, Greg, as I said, you can really tell that his tone is so dry considering what he's playing. You obviously need overdrive in order to hammer onto the guitar like Greg does from nowhere and get that sustain on that string to then resume tapping. Greg using that whammy bar, again, it's a really tasteful vibrato on the whammy because sometimes people go mental on it and it doesn't really suit the composition whereas Greg has made sure that all of the vibrato that he's adding into the track absolutely is consistent throughout and that's what top players will do they always go for that really consistent sound throughout their compositions but let's get back into the video <laughs>
and there we have it and i love the ending as well just it is classic just greg how just being unpredictable and not resolving <laughs> the end of the track such great ability but also i get the impression that the way that greg composes and the way that he plays he very much just composes something and thinks right now I'm just going to compose this and then I don't care how difficult it is to play or whether it's even possible, I will make it happen. And that's certainly the impression that you get with some of these passages that he's playing through. The speed across the fretboard and just the way that he's so clear and concise with all of those runs. And by the way, the riff that we have at the beginning of the track, which is such a great light and shade because it's such a funky groove that you can get into in that riff. But then the rest of the track, we then get into, as I said, a bit of jazz fusion in there. We've got hard rock techniques in there as well. And then just classic blues and then just pure jazz. You know, it's just all over the place in terms of the style that he's playing in. And it just makes it interesting the whole time, not only to look at because of where he's going with the composition, but also just all of the techniques that as a guitar player, if you do play yourself, you can just sit back and appreciate the difficulty level of what Greg is doing on that fretboard. And as I said, mid 80s, where we had this explosion of top technical talent in terms of that ability on the guitar, really pushing the boundaries of technique, but also that Floyd Rose bridge that was absolutely indicative of the sound of the time. Everyone will know that dive bomb sound, even if they don't know how to do it on a guitar, they'll just recognize it. It was just all over the place in the 80s. But Greg was playing in the 80s with his brother Albert, because Albert was a singer and they were called How To. And when they went their own separate ways in 1987 is when Greg sent off a tape of him as a solo artist, solo guitarist, and that was sent off to Shrapnel Records. And Mike Varney, who was in charge at the time, gave Greg a record deal straight away. He heard this tape and Greg would have been playing this exact stuff because Kick It All Over was from his first album, which was 1988, which is just called Greg Howe, but his debut album in 1988 is his biggest selling album and it was also voted 10th in the top 10 shred guitar albums of all time and that was in Guitar World magazine I think in 2009. So it certainly got a lot of coverage of that album but then his playing, he's always been doing session work for other musicians and other artists and some of the artists I admit that I'm not really up to speed with because they're outside of my radar so to speak but Christina Aguilera I've certainly heard of her but there are some other ones in there there I think there's maybe in sync or something which is a boy band with Justin Timberlake I think and he's done work on that he's also done a bit of work or at least he was playing on tour with Michael Jackson and that's his history world tour so he has been out there he has been playing a lot but just people might not have known his name also Enrique Iglesias he played for so Greg has always been there in the background behind these top artists and it is something that pops up on my channel all the time where people People might not know the guitarist by name, but they've certainly heard their playing on other people's tracks. But this is the kind of video and the kind of player that I could break down for years because it's really up my street in terms of the way that Greg plays with his tone and with those hard rock elements and some 80s elements in there as well. By the way, Alan Holdsworth was one of his biggest influences in his playing. So you can really pick up on that jazz influence where he does go down those jazz roots and plays through those passages, but then he always comes full circle and brings you back to a chorus section so it does sound familiar. You don't get lost down these avenues. But thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye.